everyone. Today on Special Interests with Bob and Donna. Bob is going to talk about the Wicked Edge Low Angle Adapter. This is the second video we've done uh, for Wicked Edge and I'll leave you the link to the first below. But before we do that, those of you who don't know who we are, I'm a retired educator and Robert is an award-winning outdoors writer and a crime thriller novelist. He's a member of the Outdoor Writers Association of America, the New York State Outdoor Writers Association of America, and the Long Island Outdoor Communicators Network. He's also received some accolades from the Marquee Publication Board of Who's Who in America for his lifetime achievement for fiction and nonfiction. So he's got quite a few credentials. But without further ado, um, you can see that we have a lot of material here that Bob has to go over. And I'm going to work the camera today, and I will see you later. Thank you, Donna, for that introduction. <clears throat> so, we left off covering the Wicked Edge model WE-130. And today we're going to be talking about a couple of... Um, accoutrements. So, let's look at the low angle adapter for this unit. Now this will fit on uh, all of the Wicked Edge knife sharpening systems except one I believe uh, going back to uh, pre-2017. Um, so let's take a look at this. We have instructions in here. We have the unit itself. This is the low angle adapter. And there's another item in here. Put it out here from the bottom. This is an additional set screw, and we'll be talking about that a little bit later on. But let's look at this. Let's look at this unit here. So, I open up my instructions. Single sheet here, nothing difficult, tells you precisely what to do. It says, clamp the low angle adapter securely into your sharpener's, uh, sharpener's vise. If you have a generation 3 clamp vise, which this is, we covered this last time, the adapter will fit snugly. The adapter will fit snugly into the vise. So you can see that there's a cutout here and also on the other side and we're going to place that into the vise. And you can see that it fits perfectly in here. Okay? Now all I do is tighten this down. Okay? And I'll start, I think, with <clears throat> an 8 inch uh, chef's knife. This is the Zwilling J.A. Hankel's uh, chef knife, 8 inch chef knife from uh, Solingen, Germany. And I believe we touched on this, but we're going to pretend that this is not Euro-American cutlery. We're going to pretend that uh, this is uh, Asian, Asian cutlery, where we will need a much lower angle in order to sharpen this properly. Um, if you remember last time, um, the instructions when I received this knife many years ago, I was supposed to sharpen this at 15 degrees, and I covered thoroughly why we really don't do your standard um, Euro-American cutlery at 15 degrees. I did this initially, and it was just too, too narrow of an angle, and I had suggested through a strong acquaintance that you sharpen virtually all your standard Euro-American cutlery 
and your sporting knives for hunting, for fishing, at 21 degrees. And there's a reason for that. If you sharpen this at 15 degrees, um, the sharp, um, it won't last as long in terms of sharpening and uh, it will crush, if you will. I'll, I'll use that word. That's what my uh, acquaintance uses, uh, a professional in the industry. And uh, if you want to get longevity out of this knife, this workhorse in the kitchen, um, sharpen at 21 degrees. Don't go to that narrow 15 degrees. So what we'll do is, what I like to do is to take a ruler and just find the middle of this. Now I just said that it's an 8 inch, 8 inch blade. And there we go. From the heel, if you will, here right to the tip, we can see that that's 8 inches. Okay? So what I want to do is make a mark here, which I've already done. I don't know if you can see this. I've made a mark at the 4-inch point, just to find the middle of this. Okay, you can see that that it's lined up at four inches, four inches from here to the tip. Now you don't have to be precise, but I'm going to just eyeball this. I'm going to put this in here. And that's about the middle. I can see it's on this side. Donna, you don't have to really uh, worry about that. Okay. Let me get these stones out of the way here. Where is my mark here? Okay. Now I'm going to take my Allen wrench, 1 8 inch, and I'm going to go to the top first and I'm going to lock this in loosely. Okay? And that holds it for openers. Take the same 1 8 inch Allen wrench, Allen key, and we're going to go into the bottom and just give that a snug. Now, I'm going to jump over here for a moment and show you that I have a set, a complete set of Allen wrenches in both metric and standard. And there's a reason for that. We don't need another Allen wrench other than what they provide uh, for openers. So put that over here. And it's kind of like an optical illusion because of the way that the blade slopes. But this is four inches from here to here. It is four inches from there to there. Okay. Now, I have, and Donna, you can home in on this if you will. You can home in on the degree bar. You will see two lines before the degree bar set in uh, one inch, uh, one inch, one degree increments. So if this is 15, this is 14, 13. So we go in terms of degrees from 13 to 35. Now lift this up a little bit and Donna, you're going to home in on the, the tenths. Okay, these um, indentions, if you will, lock in your degree angle. So I'm set here at 15, 16, 7, 8, 9, 20, 21. Okay, you can see on this side 20 and the next one would be 21. So they're both at a 21 degree. And Donna, if you can home in on this, I want to show this, these detents. Mm -hmm. Now what happens is, 
when you slide your bar back and forth, I'm going to go back to, there's 20, here's 21. I'm going to go back to that line, and what happens as I tighten this up, you see a little bit of movement here, but this will lock in precisely to 21 because it self-centers itself. So there's no wiggle room. You might, um, when we put uh, an, an angle instrument on this, sometimes you'll see a, 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 a little bit of a fractional difference. Just always make sure that these are tight, that your arm is locked in, okay, and this, of course, is set. And we're back to 21 degrees, which is what I'd like to uh, sharpen or pretend here to sharpen. This knife is pretty sharp. But I have to rework this. I'll be work it, reworking this over a period of time because initially, I, sh uh, I went to 15 degrees, and I, I learned, I learned quickly that it's too narrow. It's too narrow. So, again, we're going to pretend that this is Asian cutlery, and I want to go below 15. Okay, suppose the cutlery calls for something like 9, 10, 11, 12 degrees, okay? Um, I'm not going to be able to do that. And let's, let's see why. And again, as I mentioned last time, always be careful. When you reach across here, you're really inviting trouble. Uh, be careful. You saw the gloves that I wore the last time uh, to protect your hands. When I'm done, as a matter of fact, I had a cloth here, I, I just cover the knife just to uh, make sure that I really don't <laughs> stab myself. Um, it would be a good idea to also put your paddles on, put these stones on in back and for, instead of reaching forward and then the phone rings or you get distracted and you come and you wind up, you know, doing a number on yourself. Okay, so I want to come down to a very low angle here um, because maybe this cutlery calls for 10 degrees, whatever. So let me just go to my notes here. Uh, I have this set at 21 degrees, okay, and being that I put this on, this low adapter, it changes all the geometry here. Without the low angle adapter, adapter when I was at 21, I'm at 21. I put this accoutrement on, this accessory, and it's going to change the geometry. So instead of 21, let's see what we have. And the company suggests that you get yourself a digital angle gauge. In their video, they don't tell you which one, but in the accessory uh, section, they do show and offer the Wixy, W-I-X-E-Y. Um, forget Pittsburgh, forget some of the other ones. I've had a little bit of an issue. This is the one that you want. They're all about the same price. They're like uh, $30, $35. You'll get a, maybe a Harbor Freight one, slightly cheaper. But anyhow, you have your set of instructions here. It'll tell you what to do. We'll do the cinema. Very, very simple to operate. So what I'm going to do, and Donna's going to home in on this, I'm going to turn this on. I have an on-off button, and I simply turn it on. And I'm going to put it down on this flat surface, 
and I'm going to zero in. I'll push the zero button and you should see uh, a broken line going across. Is that a broken line? And now it's going to adjust itself to zero, zero. Now all I do, reach across very carefully. is to put this up against the blade here and where it shows 21 it's no longer 21 I mentioned that the geometry has changed so now we are at instead of 21 we're at 14.8 almost 15 an angle of 15 degrees okay you can see that there's a big difference there so what I want to do next, pretending that I probably want to get down to 9 or 10, on this side, so now we're going to move from 21 degrees, we're going to move down to, we'll go to the end, we'll go to the uh, 15, 14, 13 bar, and you're going to see, I'm going to run into an issue here, okay, I'm at the lowest one on here, okay, this is making contact with the blade, however, you'll see this screw sticking out here, so this screw is impeding my gliding back and forth here and that's why I had mentioned this set screw okay so what we're going to do is to remove this and they do not provide you with the correct allen wrench that you need So I'm going to reach over here for my standard, and I'm going to go to 332nd, so that's one, two, three, that would be the fourth one up. We'll see if I'm right here, one, two, three, this is the fourth one. And we'll see if that fits in here. Okay, there's a close end. And perfect, okay. So that fits in here. So what we want to do, I'm going to start, start a new here. If we started with the top to tighten and we went here, we'll just do the inverse. We'll just loosen this back up. I can take this knife out, put it aside, loosen this, and we're going to take this machine screw out. Why? Because it's in the way, and we'll bring in our other set screw and put the knife back remember we made that mark so here we go here let's see if I have this open enough no And I'm going to point out, Don, if you can come around here, you'll see that there is a shelf that this will rest on. You can hear it. There's a shelf there. I've got my mark. Just loosely. And then with the 330 seconds, I tighten it. 
tighten this up and that blade is not going to go anywhere. And now when I pass this along here there's clearance. I am not sharpening the top of the vise. I am sharpening the edge of the blade. It's out of the way. Okay? So, let's see. It's set. Remember the geometry has changed. It's set at 12 and remember we're pretending that this is cutlery that needs to get down to maybe 9 or 10. So we'll put this back on. It's reading 0 0.3. We want to zero it out. Here's your broken line. It's at 0, 0. I pick this up and I put it here. And what do I have, Donna? About nine minutes sliding off here. Okay. Okay. I'm getting down to the um, nine degrees. Nine degrees. I can play with this, move this. I go up to 10 to 11. I would never be able to do that without this accessory. Okay. So, of course, you would do this on the other side too. As a matter of fact, let's just take a moment and see, you know, if this is that accurate. Be careful. We're, see, what's nice too, how everything is designed, I can swing this out of the way. I'll go down to the 12. It's self-centering itself now. Go over to this side. There's no problem with the screw. Turn this back on. Zero it. And let's see what we have on this side. Nine. Eight, nine. Okay, so there is your very, very low angle for sharpening um, Asian cutlery. All right. Um, let's reverse this. Take this out here again. Now, you have a bit more control with this key here, which give you a, a bit more torque. You don't want that. You don't want to really tighten this thing down. You know, uh, you don't need to, where you will maybe put too much tension on here. So just loosen that. Take your 1 eighth. Okay. What I'd like to do, Donna, is show them the shelf, uh, a better image of the shelf here. So, maybe I even have to open this up more. Or better yet, take it apart. The knife rests on this shelf. Okay, now if we go in, this is not only good for getting down to a low degree with kitchen, uh, Asian kitchen cutlery. Let's, um, this adapter is also good for very small blades, which we'll get into in a moment. But here is the center of this blade. And again, because of the way it swoops down, it doesn't look like it. That's why I brought this out here to show you. Yeah, it's right on the mark. Half of this and half of this right up to the tip. So there's the middle. And we're going to place this. You need the adapter, no? Nope. Not no going to do that. Okay. I'm going to put this in here. Uh, as a matter of fact, let's use the uh, adjuster that they give you. If I put this down here, the blade is hidden. If I put this up here, the blade is 
almost buried. So uh, when I put the paddle on, when I put the stone on, I'm going to be sharpening, I'm going to ma be making contact with the vise, which we don't want to do. So I'm going to play a little bit here, okay? Uh, I'm doing this to show you what not to do, really. Okay, I'm going to lock this down here. And if we were to start sharpening this, you can see it's hitting the vise. It's nowhere is hitting the blade. So for small blades, this adapter, this low angle adapter, will handle this blade that you couldn't sharpen in this uh, vice. So it's also not only good for your Asian cutlery with degrees ranging from say 9, 10, 11, 12 uh, degrees, you can handle small blades. And you're going to see why you have another advantage also. This low angle adapter width is, well let's go to this one first. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on here and Donna, maybe you have to come to the other side, maybe not. This is precisely one and a half inches. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is going to the back, uh, let's see, back shelf. This is going to be one and three quarter. So what I'm going to do is, just to show that, I'm going to put this one and three quarter, the back shelf, precisely one and three quarter. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that means that you have a quarter of an inch difference between this and this. Divide that in half, we're talking about an eighth, on, uh, eighth of an inch on each uh, end, which is going to lock, hold that blade better than this. So let's put this back in here. Again, how nicely this fits. No wiggle. It just fits in there perfectly. Their other vice, let me back up to their other vice. Um, it will also fit the other vice, but there will be wiggle room, so you have to center it. This just fits in here perfectly. Bring this down. Okay. And I'll take my blade here. Now, if again, if I put it on a shelf here, it's going to be buried. But I have enough to play with here. Now I'm going to bring it up. That's not in the middle, is it? So, mm, about the middle of this. And where are my wrenches? Okay, go to our 330 seconds and just give that locked in there nicely. Now, here's something that I want you to keep in mind. You need three eighths of an inch above the top of the vise here for the blade in order to hone this thing without the stone making contact with the vise. Okay? And let's see where we are with this. Need three eighths. I'm going to put this at a quarter just to see. 
okay? And I just happened to guess correctly, we have a quarter of an inch. So when I put this on, I am not going to be making contact with the vise, I am going to be making contact with the blade. So there is the, uh, the benefit of the low adapter angle. Now we can take low the angle adapter. adapter. What did I say? A low adapter angle. Okay, <laughs> out of sequence. And let's take this out of here. All right. Now, the first thing I did when I got this, um, don't think, well, geez, I'm going to be spending $30, $35 for this. You know, I'll just kind of play. I'll, I'll just put, uh, let's take this in here. I'll just take my, I don't need the low adapter, let's say. I'll just put this in here. Donnie, you want to push that lever down for me? Get the other thing out of the way first. I just want to get this precise. Push it down. Okay. Okay, so what you can do, we'll pretend that this is a Sharpie magic marker. And what you do is you go along the tire edge of this. And once you have this set at the angle, the correct angle, it will start taking that marker off. That's one way of seeing if you have the correct uh, angle the, uh, on this, uh, on the bevel. But what you can also use this for, so you don't think that this is a waste of money. First, the moment I got this, I went down to my table saw. And you know your blade, here's the surface, the horizontal surface of your table. Um, and here's your blade. What should it be, Donna? What should that blade be? 90 degrees. Should be 90, a 90 degree angle. But guess what? I was off by a degree and a half. The needle on my, my, the needle pointer on my saw table told me that I was at zero, which meant that I was at 90 degrees, but it was kind of a wide indicator. So I was close, but no cigar. So like I said, I was off about um, a degree and a half. Played with it for seconds, and I brought this to where it's supposed to be, 90 degrees. So let's say you have molding in your house. And I have this written down. I may be uh, fooling around. I fooled with some uh, molding years ago trying to match up one section to another section. And it was like nothing short of okay. You can see some, well, you can't see in this room. Uh, we have some molding that's uh, just perfect. Um, that would be over here. So, okay, I can set my blade on the table saw to 22.5 degrees. That's what you want. Uh, from your 90, you can cant that blade to 22.5 degrees, and that's what you want, the angle you want when you start fussing around with molding. So. You, um, you have a, a couple diff a few different uses really for this. It, it is well worth it. It's well worth the money. You're not guesstimating. You're not playing around and let's say, oh, am I, you know, close, but no, but no. You'll be right on the money. And again, simple. You turn it on. That happens to be perfect, zero, zero, but let's just zero it. For giggles, there's zero, zero. I take this and I put it against my paddle on a honing stone and it'll tell me precisely what my angle is. So you can do your cutlery, 
your Asian cutlery now that require less than uh, 12 degrees. You can uh, work with small blades. You can work with uh, molding on the table saw. So let's move this out of here. This I've worked nicely. This big gun, what did I do with the big knife, Don? The chef's knife, the. Ah, thank you. Okay. Like I said, I started sharpening at 15 degrees, so I'm going to have this, going to take some time. I'm going to work this to my 21 degrees. This. Not a fillet knife, but a boning knife, really. Uh, Wicked Edge gives you, starts you off with a nice chart here. So I made a copy, and you can see that I have all my measurements. This here, my boning knife, let's look for... Chicago cutlery. So here's my boning knife, Zolgen, Germany. I didn't record anything yet, um, but I sharpened this at 21 degrees. And it is sharp. There is no grab, if you will. Let's take this baby out here. This will cut, this will cut decently, but see, there's a little bit, see that? I didn't stop, a, it's a little bit of a grab there, as opposed to something that's perfect. Very, very sharp. Okay, so that takes care that we covered this business here. You don't want to ruin this blade, okay? And 13 degrees on this is the magic. It's on the money. This is very sharp. I won't be putting this into a vise probably for quite some time. I will simply be stropping, okay? And we're going to be doing a segment on stropping down the uh, point, but... If you want to get into these kind of blades, uh, this Davo, the Davo Inox, and you'll see a little wetness here, because I put mineral oil on here so as to protect it. I don't sh shave with this every day. This is more or less a learning experience for me, but I'll tell you, I shaved... Uh, couple times with this and it is unbelievable. Got to be very, very careful until you get used to it. Like your grandfather or maybe your great grandfather. Okay, so that takes care of that. For those of you who are looking at the space we covered the last time, um, in the booklet they give you a template and I decided to put it on this board that I had laying around because I like to have everything laid out very nicely. And if you remember the tip that I gave you, okay, especially when you're, I remember I was talking about I was getting a little squeaky sound here. I got that squeaky sound probably because the diamond stones when new, and they tell you this in a booklet, it's going to take a while to break in your stones. These stones are broken in uh, pretty well now, and I never had an issue. What probably happened was, in the beginning, sharpening a lot of knives, some of the diamond flakes are going to wear off. It's normal, okay? Got in here. So what I do is I make sure I brush everything out, and I gave you this tip, too. You take uh, painter's take, tape, you bend it over, fold it over on itself, and put it in here. And when you're sharpening your blades, 
you don't have that diamond dust going down into the uh, mouth of the clamp here. But since I took this apart, and it's a piece of cake, everything is scary, everything uh, is hard when you don't know, everything's easy once you know how. Don and I worked together, we took this apart slowly, we'll be doing on a video on this, and if you do have some debris that gets in here from the diamond dust or whatever, it's easy to take apart. Okay, it's a little nerve-wracking if you don't know how. We were nervous, but we did it. We called the company just to make sure we were doing things correctly. We're going to do a video on that. And you may never have to take it apart, uh, but if you do, you'll see how easy it is. And since I broke it into stones, and as a matter of fact, there were times that I didn't even use this. I just wanted to see maybe with a dozen knives, I, I had no no issue. And this vice is touted, not by me, but by professionals around the world that this is the best system. Hand, manually operated uh, angle system in the world. And uh, you get what you pay for. Not cheap. We talked about, we've done uh, budget angle knife sharpening system. We've, we've done middle of the road. And uh, we've, this is our second video on, on this baby. And we'll uh, be doing probably, not probably, definitely a take apart and maybe another video with some other, uh, with some other uh, knives, blades. Um, you can see that this is in a middle here, uh, that I marked the middle, so I would put that in here. And let's just take a look. This has been, this is an old, old Gerber Musky fillet blade that uh, really needed, really needed some work. Extremely sharp, extremely sharp. So if you want to bring your knives, uh, your knife blades up to uh, excellence. This is the system <clears throat> to go. The other systems that Don and I have covered, nothing wrong with them. You'll just work a bit more. You'll work longer. Uh, the, this is some system. Save your shekels and get this. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. Okay. Important. When I started out, I'm not going to ruin good cutlery. My uh, Hankel's is the best that we have in this house for kitchen cutlery. We have Alaskan knives for, uh, for my hunting, and uh, we both do fishing. That um, they're, they're just marvelous knives, but I'm not going to learn. I didn't start with that. I started with inexpensive You've heard of the Dexter Russell. These are strictly Russell. I don't know what happened to Dexter. But anyways, these knives are very, very inexpensive. Not quality knives, but they were good knives to learn on. And we have, what do we have here, Donna? Do you remember the length of this one? It's about uh, 9 inch, 8 inch, 7 inch, something like that. So... Learn, practice on your inexpensive cutlery, and then when you get into your finer cutlery, you will be amazed at how sharp these babies are. Okay, let's see. My angle, ba -bum, 30 seconds. I think we covered it all, except I just want to fine tooth. This Wicked Edge model, WE-130, uh, it's their precision model. So it's the Wicked Edge precision model WE-130 vice. That's about it, folks. I think we covered it all. Thank you.